and today we are going to talk about needles. Um, lots of questions about needles, what kind to use, how often to change them. So I want to kind of go over the different types of needles and um, if you want to know more information, Schmetz um, Needles has a great website that talks a lot about needles and you can reference that. So here we have three different types of needles. We have stretch needles, universal, and microtex. So there are three basic types of needles. The, you have your stretch needles or ballpoint needles, which are for um, any type of knit fabric because you know like if you ever wear tights or something like that and you get a snag in them, how it can cause a runner. The same thing can happen with your needles. With a ballpoint, the tip is rounded um, and so it pushes the fibers to the side and you don't have to worry about it um, shredding the fibers. Next you have universal needles and a universal is not quite a ballpoint and not quite a sharp. So it's just kind of an in-between needle and so you can use it for pretty much anything. That's why it's called universal. Um, it's not my favorite needle. Honestly, um, I don't think that it gives you as good of a stitch sometimes because what happens is say these are my fibers. So with a ballpoint needle, the needle pushes the fiber to the side. Okay, with um, a universal, sometimes it pushes it to the side, sometimes it pierces the fiber. And so sometimes you'll get, instead of a nice straight stitch, you'll get a little tiny crook in your, in your fiber, or in your stitch, and so um, it doesn't do as pretty of a straight stitch, I don't think. Next, I have Microtex. So this is part of a group called Sharps. Um, and so sharp needles have an extremely sharp point, and they have different types of needles. Um, so you have Microtex. This would be for a micro um, fiber. Those are very, very um, densely packed, um, almost sort of like a batik would almost be that way, where um, it's hard for the needle to go through the fabric. And so the nice sharp point goes through it very easily. Another type of um, sharp would be um, jeans needles and um, those are for denim um, also in heavy fabrics you also have quilting needles top stitch needles those type of needles um, give you a nice sharp point on them so there's a type of needle for just about every application and it's I think it's important to use the proper needle for the fabric that you're using um, one of the other questions about needles is the sizes so if you look on the package like this one says 120 slash 19 um, 120 is the, um, I guess the European sizing and 19 is the American sizing. So this one's an 80 slash 12. So if somebody says they ha need a 12 needle, if it says 80, it's the same needle. Um, so with needles, you start with like a size eight and go up to like a 19. Um, so the smaller the number, the smaller the needle. So if you're doing a Batiste fabric, um, like a size 10 needle would be really good. And then of course, the heavier the fabric, the, the um, bigger the needle needs to be. I use the size 80 slash 12 a lot. That's just a good general size needle. You also have, I do a lot of machine embroidery, so I have my organ needles for that. And my favorite organ needle is a size 7511, which, um, size 7511 needle which uh, has a um, with embroidery needles the eye of the needle is actually one size bigger than the actual needle so it would have um, it keeps the uh, threads from shredding um, there's also metallic or metafil needles um, that you can use as well and those are coated so that they keep the um, metallic fibers from from shredding uh, then there's a couple of different specialty needles. These are wing needles, and this one is a double wing needle. And um, they have, let me open this so you can see it. So they have these little wings on the side of them. And what that does is it makes a bigger hole in the fiber. So if you do anything like heirloom sewing um, and a stitch that goes back and forth within the same um, hole multiple times, this will create like a hole in the fabric and it just adds to the um, the look of the stitch. It's really quite pretty. Uh, I don't have any samples here um, right now, but and so then there's also a double wing needle and then there's other wing needles, as, I mean a double needles as well. This one is um, like I said with the wing needle, so one of the needles is a wing and the other one is a um, regular needle. And if you look at a double needle 
they have um, two needles on one shank. So it goes into your machine with the flat part to the back, just like your regular needle. And then the two needles share a bobbin. So on the back, it's gonna give like a little zigzag look to it. Um, this is great if you don't have a cover stitch machine to do double needle hem um, hems in your t-shirts and stuff. This gives a nice stretchy stitch. So if you, um, I don't have a wing needle, I mean a double needle here that has it, but there are, um, on a wing needle, you'll have like a, um, a 2.0, 4.0, um, 6.0 up to 9, or I think 8.0. And what that is, is actually the space between the two needles. So if you have a machine that has a 5.5 millimeter um, stitch width on it, the biggest wing needle you can use on your machine is a 4.0 because um, that will give you just enough clearance for you to be able to do have those two needles go through the hole of the throat plate. Changing your needles. I recommend changing your needles after every project. Um, honestly, needles are really inexpensive compared to the fabric and the threads and all the things that you put into your project. I have a little um, pill bottle that my husband drilled a hole in the top of it and so when I finish with the needles I just pop that needle down into the um, into the pill bottle so that nobody gets hurt with it. I use them to hang pictures and quilts and things like that. Um, so if you have any other questions for me just um, post them on Facebook, ask them on Instagram, we'd be glad to answer them for you.